I'm not seeing us. I'm not seeing us either. Is that the 30 second delay Steve speaks of? Oh, there we are. There we are. The APA world is slowly finding us. <laughs> finding us here at work. Doing good work. Hello, everyone. You're not supposed to say that yet. No, you <laughs> Pre-show banter. <laughs> Pre-show banter. Pre-show banter. We have to build an audience, folks, so we will pretend that we don't see you as we banter here at the news desk. Just building a little bit of an audience here as we go live on the APA Facebook page. Are you going to be on your phone the whole time? Perhaps. Okay. Okay. Engage the audience who now sits at 68. That's pretty impressive that 68 people stick around watching us just sit here with headsets on in front of a chalkboard. We're oh, now it's... Yeah. yeah. Let's talk politics, folks. <laughs> no. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. So once we get up to, uh, I don't know, what do you think, 100? 100 is probably a good number. Folks, get us to 100 and we will start our program today. Hovering around 80 currently. We've got a lot to talk about related to the upcoming 92? pool player championships. Very excited for that. So we're just looking for the magic number of 100. Slowly but surely climbing. We're getting there. You'd think with 130,000 followers we could get to 100 <laughs> live viewers, right? I, I think so. We're I almost think there, folks. Day on a Tuesday, That's true. Yeah. Folks are at work doing their thing. Right. Here we are at the office talking pool player championships. I'm at 95. What are you I'm at? 97. Oh, that's interesting. That is interesting. You just dropped to 92. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started, folks. Hello, hello. From here at the APA headquarters in St. Louis, I'm Jason Bowman. I'm joined by Becky Rosner. We are part of APA's marketing team here in St. Louis. And... Uh, preparations, Becky, well underway here for uh, our big championships coming up. Absolutely. Packing up this Friday. So in the process of packing up, one of the things we have to do is test out all of our equipment. And as we were testing all of our equipment for our live streams, we decided, you know what? We're excited. People at home are excited. We're hearing from people on social media. Let's just jump online and talk a little bit about the Pool Player Championships, right? Absolutely. We're getting lots of questions, lots of comments, people getting excited about the event. So perfect opportunity. Yeah. So, Pool Player Championships, folks, kick off in a, uh, uh, two weeks from today? Two, two weeks, weeks from tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, yes. tomorrow's Wednesday. If you're watching this uh, live, you're watching it on Tuesday. So, two weeks from tomorrow, we will kick off the Pool Player Championships, April 25th, at the Westgate Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. Uh, should be an exciting event. We've got five different championships that will be decided. Uh, of course, we've got our 8-Ball Classic, which will have five championships within it, uh, our nine ball shootout that'll have three championships, then you've got the eight ball and nine ball doubles championship, and the wheelchair championship. Did I get them all? I think you got them all. All right, it's a lot of all. facts yeah, to try to remember. Absolutely. So as we go today, we're going to preview each of those events. We'll talk a little bit about the prize payout in those events. Uh, we'll introduce you to the souvenir program or the event guide that uh, is going to kind of walk you through the event, Becky holding here, and uh, maybe we'll try to get our Folks that are off camera here, maybe they can pin that program guide or a link to the program guide up for you guys to follow along. If not, we will do that after the fact. So, uh, again, if you're just joining us, we are previewing the upcoming Pool Player Championships in Las Vegas, April 25th through the 29th. But before you get to the championships, folks, you got to know what to pack. What to pack. And so Absolutely. Becky here, Becky's patented... Top 12 things, okay. although they can't hear Becky at the moment. This is Steve off camera. One of the things when you decide to impromptu go live like this is uh, a lot of times your gear's not set up, right? So this is one of the reasons we're doing testing now and decided to have some fun and see if uh, people wanted to talk with us about the pool player championships coming up. Are you back? I hope so. Let's see. Check one, check, check two. Check. What do you think, folks? Here, Becky. Of course, now you can't hear anything. 
check, check one, check, check two. Check, check, check. Buckle Steve's shoe. <laughs> <laughs> no audio? Oh, well, they can hear me. So I'll be a one-man show up here. <laughs> For the time being. For the time being. All right, so again, if you're just tuning in, folks, you're watching, uh, you're here watching us live in St. Louis, headquarters of the APA. We're talking a little bit about the Pool Player Championships beginning April 25th at the Westgate Resort and Casino. It's going to be five action-packed days of pool playing excitement, five different championships be decided, and a whopping $675,000 uh, up for grabs. Our production guy, Tell Steve, is getting hand gestures as we speak. He's telling us to take our headsets off. All right, we're killing the headsets? Killing the headsets. All right. You're good. Good now? Yep. We are now headsetless, <laughs> continuing to talk about the Pool Player Championships. Becky, I mentioned $675,000 up for grabs. It's going to be a big payday for some folks. Huge payday for a lot of folks. Some of them will be taking home up to $15,000 in cash and prizes just for the 8-Ball Classic. Yeah. So before we get into uh, each event, the payouts, the, the number of folks that are playing, I uh, want to kind of get you guys prepared uh, to go to Vegas, right? The things that you need to pack. And to do that, we've got Becky's top Top 12? Top 12. Becky's got... Top 12. And look, when it comes to pack, packing, Becky knows how to pack, right? She goes out there for two <laughs> weeks at a time, so she's going to tell you everything you need to pack and her top 12 things to bring. All right. Coming in at number one, we'll start out with number one, your photo ID. Very important. Of course, most of you guys know that. You need that to get on the plane if you're flying there, um, but you also need that to register. And if you want any prize money or things like that, you'll need it. Yep, you'll need it to register. You'll need it uh, for player verification before your match. Uh, you may need it at the bar if you look under 21. Very right? good point. Very so good point. So make sure number one on your list for packing your identification, your driver's license or your passport. Uh, it's not going to be a good trip if you forget no, that. No, not at all. Um, all right. Membership card, too, we'll add in there. Uh, you can have that downloaded through your member services account. So just either have that saved to your phone. You can also just pull it up through the app on your phone, too. But nice. you'll need that to register for many, many events out there. Yeah, and I believe there's, if you guys, if you get out there and you don't have access to your membership card through the app, I believe there is a process that you can go through to obtain your card. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if there's a small fee associated with that, but... Uh, yeah. One way or another, we'll, we'll take care of you and make sure you got what you need. So, uh, membership card coming in membership right behind card. the uh, driver's yes. license. Yes, yes. Or passport. Um, number two on our list is, of course, your cue stick. Probably most of you are going to remember that one. Um, but do also remember that you have to check it on the airplane. Definitely. So, um, make sure that that's packaged correctly to make sure that goes into your checked luggage rather than carrying it onto the airplane. Yeah, we do hear from some folks from time to time that say, hey, you know, I was able to carry my cue stick onto the airplane. Don't recommend trying that. Again, the, the last thing you want is to have your cue stick taken as you're going through security and you've right. got to hurry up and make a flight. So go ahead and plan to check your cue case in your packed uh, luggage. A lot of folks kind of wrap it up in, in the case uh, within, within their clothes. Sure. And, you know, usually no problem. Another option would be uh, if you're not comfortable checking your cue into, the, into your suitcase, uh, would be to ship it there to the Westgate. And that's right. an option as well. I think they've got like a, There's a FedEx, FedEx store. Yeah. So if you go to Westgate's website, you can get information on that. So yeah, Absolutely. All right, number three, we have bring a good attitude. Remember, win or lose, you can have the time of your life. It's an experience, not just a pool tournament. Yeah, so here's the thing, folks. There are going to be almost 2,400 players out there, and all of you are showing up with expectations of going home as number one, right? But uh, only a few people are going to be go able to go home as the champion, so I, I think it's important that you understand uh, one, you've already made it this far. Absolutely. And that's a big deal. So you're that's a champion huge. just qualifying to come out to this event. So keep that in mind, but keep a positive attitude as well. And I'm not just talking about when you encounter our tournament staff or the Westgate staff or even when you get to Vegas. Come out with a positive attitude from right. the time you leave the house, right, going to the airport. Sometimes flying can be a little stressful, right? right? Getting checked in, there's a lot of people, you're jammed in it. Just try to keep a positive attitude. I think if you keep a positive attitude, you're going to have a more positive trip overall, regardless of whether you win or lose. Absolutely. Yep. Moving on. All right, moving on. Number four, we have bring your A game. No. <laughs> bring that A game, folks. Yeah, again, uh, hopefully you've been practicing and preparing and uh, you are ready for the challenge that is ahead of you here at the 
pool player championships. I know we've got 268 tables Crazy. that'll be set up. So for a lot of folks that have never seen an event like this, it's pretty overwhelming when Very. you walk in the door and you see, mm -hmm. we like to call it a sea of pool tables, if you will. Um, so to see that for the first time, again, you're, you're kind of on a big stage. Make sure you're mentally prepared for uh, the challenge ahead of you. Yeah, everybody, anyone can win. So especially at this event, we've got players at all of our events. We have players of all skill levels. So. Right. Yeah, and again, we're going to kind of break down the different tiers yeah. and talk about how many players are within each tier of the different events and, and that kind of thing as we go. But we're, again, we're continuing kind of the top 12 things to make sure you bring to Vegas before you get out there. Absolutely. So number five, we have bring a set of nice clothes for the Pool Dog Championship Arena. Um, in the Pool Dog Arena, the, the, um, the dress code is a little more you know, stepped up a notch. For so sure. make sure that you have your clothes for that. Jeans are not allowed in the championship arena. Yeah, and a lot of folks will ask us, you know, why do I have to dress up, you know, nicer when I'm playing in the pool dog arena, um, you know, which is your semifinals and finals of each event. And the reason for that is, one, there's a lot of cameras and photography taken. Right. Obviously, we're live streaming uh, the five final matches, and I want to give a shout out to the folks at Pool Dog who will be sponsoring our presenting sponsor of the live stream matches. We thank them for their support. But um, so again, you know, photography, video, you're gonna, the, the moments in those finals and semifinals are gonna be captured for posterity for a long time. And you wanna look good, right? So do yourself a favor, pack some nicer stuff in case you happen to make it uh, to the semifinals and finals round in the, the pool dog arena. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're planning on going out in Vegas too, I'm sure that you can, you know, it'll help you for that as well. Oh yeah, you're gonna <laughs> club it up. You better right. dress it up. Right. That's right. <laughs> All right, moving All right, on. All right, number six, we have uh, bring a set of pool party clothes. Pool party. So we do have a pool party. Pool party takes place on Friday night, 8 o'clock at the Westgate Pool. Um, as far as I know, the pool's going to be open. So whether it's weather permitting, if it's warm enough or yeah, not. Yeah, I've been checking the forecast, <laughs> and Jason's current forecast shows about low 80s, okay. not a lot of wind. So That's good. You know, whether or not that's pool uh, temperature at night, I'm not right. sure, but the pool party regardless is always a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of people show up. Of course, we have different giveaways, uh, DJ, you can do shots with Becky until she drops. Uh, it's really a <laughs> great experience. Yeah, Dr. Q will be performing exhibitions, uh, lots Q, of fun right. stuff. Lots yeah. of fun stuff. So make party. sure you, and that again, pool party is Friday. 8 p.m. Friday, 8 p.m., that's April 27th. Mark yes. your calendars, folks, if you're coming out, plan accordingly, because there's a lot to do in Vegas, not just with the tournament, but within the city itself. You're going to want to yeah. get that pool party on your schedule that is right there at the Westgate. Third floor of the Westgate yep. is the pool. So Everybody's welcome. Make sure you're there, 8 o'clock. It's going to be a great time. All right, number seven, we've got the hangover remedy. Not saying this is going to be an issue, but it's probably best not to take any chances, right? Yeah. <laughs> Becky knows about the remedies, trust me. Make sure you bring your Advil, ibuprofen, you know, whatever you got to use. Drinking lots of water is also important, whether yeah. it's to cure a hangover or just to stay hydrated. A lot of folks um, may not realize that if you haven't been to Vegas before, but you're in the desert, right, um, low humidity, you want to make sure you're, you're continually... Uh, keeping the water flow. That's number eight on our list. Oh, I jumped ahead. Hydration. Look at that. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Hydrate. A lot so. of people are wanting to do shots with you now. Oh, shots okay. with Becky. All right, that that's great. Thanks, Jason. There you go. Shot. Thanks. <laughs> Locate Becky at the pool party and remind her about what she said right. on the what Jason live said. Oh, was that me? Yeah. That was me. Sorry. All right, number nine on our list, we've got your smartphone. Of course, I'm sure nobody leaves the house without it these days. But be sure you check out hashtag APA Vegas. Yeah, when you're posting pictures or, or sharing different things uh, on your social media, hashtag that APA Vegas. That's what. That's kind of where the community of everything uh, related to the event will live for the, the over that period of time right. that we're out there. So again, hashtag APA Vegas. You'll see signage throughout the facility there reminding you to do that. But again, it's a great environment to take pictures and uh, shoot video and that kind of thing. And all we do is ask that when you do that and you share it with your friends and family, hashtag APA Vegas yeah, to let absolutely. them know kind of what the event is all about that you're attending. Mm -hmm. We're over on Instagram as well. So in addition to seeing stuff on our Facebook page, um, definitely hashtag it on Instagram too. Twitter. And Twitter. Twitter. Yes. We tweet. Both at pool players. We tweet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number 10 on our list, sunscreen. Ooh. If you're planning to be outside at all, definitely bring the sunscreen. Yeah, here's the thing, guys. I mean, the, the, the sun in Vegas is bright. And so even if the temperature is not hot, and you're not sweating, if you are out and about walking on the strip, 
Um, if you happen to go out to the pool for a couple hours, it may not feel super hot, right. but it will feel hot later on when your skin is scorched and you look ridiculously red. We've all Trust me, we have all learned this the mm -hmm. hard way. So pack the sunscreen SPF 30. 30, 45, I mean, whatever you got to do. Look at you with the 45. No, I I okay, yeah, I was going to say. She thinks it's 45. But pack some sunscreen, be safe. Um, you know, make sure you're comfortable for the time that you're yeah, out there. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to be miserable with the sun, sunburn the whole time. Right. Number 11, comfortable shoes. You will do a lot of walking. <laughs> Besides, in our tournament area and at the Westgate, if you go outside the hotel, everything is super spaced out. So... Yeah, so my personal shoes. recommendation, gentlemen, for the packing is as follows. Number one, a pair of tennis shoes, right, for walking around. Mm -hmm. uh, a pair of dress shoes for uh, dinners out, maybe if you're going to a show. If you want to get into some of the nicer uh, nightlife type places right. out there, you're going to want to have something nicer than tennis shoes. And then probably a pair of flip-flops, right? Mm -hmm. So if, you're, yeah. if it happens to be warm enough and, and you're, you know, you're not walking very far, just kind of hanging around, um, maybe going to the pool, Right. Flip flops. So that is Jason's patented packing <laughs> list for men. Uh, I don't know what Becky recommends for the ladies. Probably somewhere between six and twelve pairs would be my guess. That's safe. I six think. pairs. How yeah, many pairs of shoes you bring? I probably bring six, six to eight pairs. You wear the same tennis shoes every I day. No, I switch it out between probably two pairs of tennis shoes, oh, two or three. There you go. Got to bring the heels. I personally do not wear a whole lot of heels out there because it's just miserable. Um, Tough when you have to, to get walk around. Super right. far, but. I, you know, throw a pair of flip-flops in your purse maybe uh, if you're planning on wearing shoes out that night. But definitely tennis shoes, I think. So pack Better accordingly, folks, when it comes to the shoes. If your feet yeah. aren't comfortable, you will not be comfortable. Yep. Last on our list is the event program, which right here. And also you're available gonna online. Get, yeah, also available online. Um, we'll go ahead. It's on our Facebook page right now. There's a link to it from last week. We can pin it to the top of our page when we're done. Um, it's on poolplayers.com on the pool player championship section as well. And then you'll get a printed copy when you get out there as well. So Yeah, and it's loaded with information. We're going to kind of go through some of it today. But everything from agendas and schedules for the different events to some of the side events that we've mentioned. Um, there's just a lot of things that happen yeah. throughout the event. And again, it can be kind of overwhelming if you've never been there before. Um, so I always encourage people that are going for the first time, do a little research, kind of understand mm -hmm. what you're getting into before you right. get there, um, kind of know when the events happen, and, and plan accordingly. So, um, so we've got the 12 things to remember to pack, yeah. and I think that was good. Um, so let's talk about when folks start to arrive, right? Yes. You, you get into Vegas, you fly in, it's beautiful, you've gone over the Hoover Dam, it's a great day, you're at the airport, you pick up your bag and it's like, now what do I now do? Now what do I do? Alright, so what you do when you get to the airport, I would recommend having kind of in mind and being prepared, knowing uh, how you want to get from the airport to the hotel. For sure. Right? So there are different options. Obviously, there are taxi cabs, and right. there's, a, there's a line that you'll wait in. It looks very long if you get it in, does. but it goes very quickly. Um, so they're, the option of taking taxi cabs, Uber, Uber uh, Lyft, Lyft. Are, are also options if you want to do some of the ride sharing. Um, there are also shuttles. Yeah, we actually have a discount with, I don't want to say, I believe it's Super Shuttle. Does any, is anyone else in this room? Okay. There is a discount and it's on our... Who are you talking our, to? <laughs> well, talking I to? didn't know if Amber or Bill maybe knew. <laughs> there are others in this there room that you don't see. There are people in this room that <laughs> we can't Becky's see. not talking to ghosts, I swear. <laughs> So it is on the Pool Player Championships page. There's a link to the discount um, for that shuttle. For shuttle. So here's shuttle here's the difference well. between like a, taking a cab and a shuttle. So a shuttle, you're going to probably get on there with like 10, 12 people. Right. And you're going to stop at multiple hotels. I don't know if, if, the first, if the Westgate would be their first hotel or their last, but just understand, you know, you're kind of sharing a ride in order to save a few bucks. My personal recommendation is, grab, is, is to spend the other $4 on a cab yeah. or uh, an Uber and get to the hotel faster, be more comfortable. But again, if you're looking to save a couple bucks, the shuttle is, is yeah. another option for you. If you're there you. by yourself and maybe you don't want to spend, you know, $25, $30 to get to the hotel. Sure. And I would say, yeah, that's probably a safe estimate, about $30 to get from mm -hmm. the airport to the Westgate in a cab. And again, that's going to vary depending on time of day, traffic, that kind of thing. But I think if you earmark about $30, you should be good. Yeah. That's each way um, to and from the airport. So keep that in mind, budget accordingly. All right, so we're at the Westgate. We're at the Westgate. We just got dropped off. We're super stoked. Mm -hmm. We go in the front door, and we're going to make a left. To the left. Right, we're going to go to the left, to the left, all the way to the registration <laughs> desk. Oh my God. Uh, and that's where you're going to register again. 
Um, there may be a fairly uh, lengthy looking line, yes. but again, it, they move fairly quickly. Again, this is Vegas, right? There are not a lot of short lines. So don't get upset, don't get deterred when you see a long line. Um, just go ahead and jump in it. It'll move as quickly as it can. And again, that positive attitude is going to keep you smiling all throughout. And here's a little hint, right? When you check in at hotels, whether it's the Westgate or somewhere else, the nicer you are to those people, the better off you're going to be, right? It may not mean you get upgraded to a better room, but they may put you in a, in a room that's in a better location, right? Not right next to the elevator or, you know, a room that's been updated. So just right. kind of be nice to people out there. It goes a long way. Trust me. Absolutely. All right, so next, I guess. So we've checked in at the hotel. In. Now yep. we got to go check out the event. Yep. Right, so once you get to the Westgate, you get checked in. My recommendation would be check into your room, go drop off your bags, right? Then find your way down to the tournament room and kind of acclimate yourself to where things are. You're going to see APA staff. You're going to see people with pool cues walking that way. Of course, if you open the program guide here to like the second or third page, and again, yours will look a little nicer. We just printed these off, but you'll get a, a, a magazine. Four and five. Yeah, you'll kind of see a map of the Westgate that'll direct you down to the tournament area. Worst case scenario, though, if you, if you can't access the program guide and you're just not sure, follow the people with cue sticks. Yep. All right, it's not hard. They will all be heading in the same direction down to the tournament room. It is a massive area. I definitely recommend checking it out before the day of your match, right? You don't just want to come down there the morning of your match and have to kind of navigate where's what because different events happen in different spaces right. within the Westgate's convention space so kind of know where you need to go um, again look for people with APA shirts either black APA shirts or either blue or black APA jackets most of us will have staff yeah. badges on and are always happy to help the Westgate staff are very familiar with us as well um, if you're turned around and you aren't sure where to go you can talk to them and more than likely they can also point you in the right direction so there's always going to be someone to kind of help you get to where you're going, but just understand you won't necessarily get a map right. when you check in at the hotel to navigate to the tournament area. All right? Yep. So uh, from there, let's just dive into to some of the different events that will be going on. Um, of course, the event will get started on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday April 25th mm -hmm. with the opening ceremony, and that will officially kick off, um, I believe, the 8-ball classic, classic and the 9-ball doubles. 9-ball doubles, I believe, as well, yeah. So uh, that's always a cool experience, too. Even mm -hmm. if your event is not starting then, but you happen to be in Vegas, come down to the opening ceremonies. It's right. It's a nice presentation. Um, Renee Lyle, president of APA, makes kind of a nice opening address, gets people pumped up. Um, but the really cool part about it is your buddy that comes out. My buddy, Lisa Smith, she is our singer out in Vegas. She is amazing. She's going to sing the national anthems, kind of get everybody pumped up and ready for the event. It's, so. I mean, it's, I mean, it almost sends chills through you. I've seen it dozens of times and still to this day, every time I yeah. hear it, it's like, ooh, you know, it's, it's kind of a thing. So make sure you check that out if you can. Again, that's 1230, Wednesday, April 25th. Uh, Lisa is a local kind of singing sensation there in Vegas. Yes. In fact, I'm interested in talking to her to see if she's actually gotten any gigs singing at the uh, at the hockey team's arena yeah. because she is outstanding. She sings not only the U.S. national anthem, the but the Canadian national anthem. She also sings the Japanese. Japanese. And I was looking at our list. We got it. We got a player from Japan player. that'll be there. So uh, she's gonna sing the Japanese national she anthem as well. Sing the Jap Japanese. All right, so if you've never heard the Japanese National Anthem, there's your chance, folks. So we're going to have 48 states represented at this year's event, right, which is basically every state APA league play is played in. We have two states that we don't uh, currently have activity in. Don't ask me what they are at the moment. One of them is the Dakota. North, South, I'm South guessing Dakota, North Dakota. North Dakota, I think. And, and uh, either, I think maybe Wyoming. Idaho. Idaho. There you go. No, not Idaho. What's Utah? No. I don't know. Apparently, I do we'll not know. We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you APA is in 48 <laughs> states. All 48 are be represented in yes. Vegas at the Pool Player Championships, which is going to bring in a grand total of 2,345 event participants. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of folks. That's a lot of cue sticks, right? It's going to be a great time. Uh, vendors from all over the country will be there. Uh, the opportunity to purchase anything from cue sticks to cases to really any kind of billiard accessory you can think of, yep. you'll be able to find it there. All right, so nine ball shootout we've got is our first event that'll be kicking off. Nine ball shootout is going to feature 512 eight players. Ball eight ball classic. Eight ball classic. Same time. Yeah. Okay. We'll yeah. go ahead then. 
No, right, we were saying okay. <laughs> okay. eight ball classic starts first, right before nine ball shootout. Yeah, they, well, they both the opening ceremonies on oh, the twenty fifth. Oh, opening for ceremonies both. for both. Gotcha. Right, right. Okay. So, but technically, eight ball Te classic starts eight first. Ball classic first, yeah. So, eight ball classic for those of you that don't know is kind of the the granddaddy of all these events, right? Um, that was the one that started it all. There was a time when it was just the eight ball classic, mm -hmm. right? And back then, at least from when I started, it was a men's division and a ladies division. Right, and uh, ultimately that split up into tiers, skill level tiers. We did away with kind of the gender thing. Um, today there are now five tiers. Originally five there were tiers. three, we're at five tiers. You've got the blue tier, which is your skill level twos and threes. You've got the yellow tier, which is your skill level fours. You've got the red tier, which is your skill level fives. Orange tier is skill level sixes. And the purple tier, um, as good as it gets, the skill level sevens, 134 of those players will be out there in that particular division competing. And each of those divisions is playing for $15,000 in first place prize uh, prize money. So pretty cool thing. Uh, again, we mentioned blue tier, skill level twos and threes. We've got 41 participants okay. in that particular event. So a great opportunity. Great. This is one of the things that I never really understand, Becky, about the blue tier is why we don't have more participation. I don't need, I'm in that tier. Right. I would definitely be in that tier, I believe. Would you be too, Jason? Yes. I would be in yes. that tier. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Becky's been playing pretty good pool lately, folks. She was. Did you win the MVP? I did win MVP. Little Miss session. MVP of our office uh, division here is now uh, giving me I lessons. I went from a one to a two. So, but I think the big point here is that for those of you that, that aren't making it out to the event this year to the pool player championships, for those of you guys that are lower skill level players, get on those qualifier Absolutely. boards. There, there's great opportunity here for you. And again, this event is tiered to your skill level. So we've only got 41 players this year, right? Yeah, uh, so the odds of going home with some prize money in that particular tier are very good. Uh, we're going to have 110 players in the yellow tier. We've got 165. The largest tier is our red tier with uh, the skill level fives. Again, 165 players. There'll be 162 players in the orange tier. Uh, and as I already mentioned, 134 players in that purple tier. And again, we're going to be pushing a lot of the, the tournament department just gave us all these numbers. Like they've been compiling all this information for several weeks. And uh, we're going to be pushing some of this stuff out sure. through social media. So again, you don't have to like take notes right now if you don't want. <laughs> um, we'll have that information available. But yeah. if you're in one of those particular tiers and you're interested in kind of knowing how many people there'll be, you kind of have that now. So uh, nine, ball shootout nine Ball Shootout also starts on Wednesday and runs through Friday. Nine ball shootout starts Friday, runs through Sunday. Sunday, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So eight ball, gonna... eight ball doubles. Eight ball doubles starts on Wednesday as well. Yes. No, eight ball doubles starts Friday. Eight ball doubles runs through Sunday. Nine ball doubles starts Wednesday. Nine ball doubles runs we're through just, Thursday. We're getting them mixed up. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Eight ball is where you sink the eight ball last. Ah, that's it. Nine ball <laughs> is where you sink the nine ball. Got it. MVP. Got it. Okay. Got it. So, um, anyway, just a little thing between Becky and I. 256 teams in the nine ball shootout. That's 512 players. Of course, the prize fund or the top payout for nine ball shootout. Nine ball double, $3,500. dollars $3, Second place is getting $2,300. Um, so, nice payday. Yeah, and we pay out all the way down to, to wow, to 33rd. So good odds to, if you're playing in that event, that you're going to go home with some money. So um, so after the, the two events kick off, we will kick off the wheelchair event on Thursday, Thursday, which is the 26th. We've got 57 players this year in the wheelchair championship. I know that's one of Bill's favorite events. Um, Bill Tufts, our uh, tournament productions director, is, is here listening to make sure we don't say anything incorrect that he has to lash out at us for so uh, in fact he'll probably join us here in a little bit because we will open it up to some questions and if you have technical questions about skill levels or rules he's he's kind of the man so we'll bring him in here in a little bit but the wheelchair championship really a phenomenal event if you've it never is. seen it um it's pretty amazing what these players are able to do on a pool table it is. i know i saw on social media the other day our good friend florian mm -hmm. Ben kohler was at an APA event, yeah, and they North Carolina, and they asked yeah. him to play in a wheelchair because they had a wheelchair event going on, and he said he was just astonished mm -hmm. at the endurance it takes to be able to, to, to play, yeah. right, to continue to move around the table and to be able to lean over and shoot as best you can. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a really remarkable event, and again, all of these events will be live streamed uh, on the APA Facebook page. Yep. They will be on our YouTube channel. They'll be on poolplayers.com, and they'll all be brought to you by our friends at Pool Dog. Cool. 
Uh, and I know I've been talking to the guys at Pool Dog. They're going to have some special offers and things oh, awesome. that they'll offer during the event final. So make sure you tune in, try to take advantage of that. And again, we, we really appreciate their support. Uh, I think it's going to let us do some cool new things with the streaming this year. Sure. We're not ready to let the cat out of the bag just yet, but um, I think those things will be revealed as we get into the events themselves. We're excited. So on Friday, the 27th, we will kick off the final two events, yep. which will be the nine ball shootout as well as the eight ball doubles. Eight ball doubles. <laughs> there we go. Eight ball doubles, 768 players. So that's a 384 board. That event has become huge. Huge. I can remember when that event began, and it's just grown and grown and grown, and basically we're, I think we're at capacity for all those events these days, right? Uh, I don't know that we can take any more uh, yeah. teams in there. I think that was the max on that. So mm -hmm. the payout for eight ball doubles, first place, 5000 5, Second place is taking home 3000 The two third place teams are going to each take home two. Paid four all the way players, down to 65th. All the way down to 65th, and that's at 100 bucks. So... Again, some great opportunity if you're playing in the Showdown Series events. And when we say Showdown Series, we're referring to 8-ball doubles, we're referring to 9-ball doubles, and we are referring to the wheelchair championships. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, great opportunity for players to, to make some money. And I think, more importantly, have a great time. Right? Absolutely. So let's dive into the 9-ball shootout, Becky. So in the 9-ball shootout, how many tiers do we have in that one? We have three tiers in the 9-ball shootout. Three tiers. We've okay. got the green tier, that's skill levels 1 through 3. Um, white tier is going to be your skill levels four through five, <laughs> and then black is going to be six through nine. Right. So. Looks like this year we've got in the green tier 60 participants, in the white tier 163 participants, and in the black tier 173 players. So that's a total of 396 players competing in this year's nine ball shootout. So again, should be a great event. I think that the prize payout for the nine ball shootout. 10,000 to first, 10,000 cash 5,000 second, mm -hmm. 3,000 to two people tying for third, 1,500 to four players tying for fifth, and we pay out all the way down to 17. 17th place. So again, great opportunity, and that all is going to add up to about 600, a little over $675,000 that will be paid out in total at the Pool Player Championship. So a lot of money to be won, um, some great trophies to be claimed. Uh, just a lot going on at the event itself. Of course, we mentioned the live streaming of all of those championships brought to you by Pool Dog, so folks are going to want to make sure they can tune into that. Um, for the Showdown Series events, on each of their given days, those finals will be streamed, I believe, at 5 p.m. That is Pacific yeah, Daylight I Time, with the exception of 8-Ball Doubles, which will kick off at 4 p.m. on the 29th. So Sunday. wheelchairs, 5 p.m., Nine ball sh uh, doubles is 5 p.m., eight ball doubles 4 p.m., um, Pacific Daylight Time, the eight ball classic and nine ball shootout, both of those finals on their respective days will kick off at noon. Um, and again, they'll, they'll feature multiple divisions, and we'll find a way to, to bring you guys coverage from all of those matches some way, somehow, uh, as they go on. So it should be really exciting. Uh, if you're not able to join us, again, tune in. Um, kind of get a chance to see what it's like for these players. It's it's always interesting, Becky, to watch players in the finals. It is, for sure. All, just to feel the energy in the room and kind of getting to that point after playing for all those days and locally and everything, it's it's really cool. I think even for, I mean, I, I can't imagine being on that stage and no. playing um, <laughs> with the cameras on and, and the room full of folks, um, the prize money on the line. Uh, I almost start to feel nervous for them. I do too. Right? I find myself like sweating for people I've never met until yeah. moments before the match. But um, always cool to tune in and watch. Uh, the Black Widow Jeanette Lee will be there oh, yeah. joining me for the live stream commentary. So mm -hmm. get a chance to hear her thoughts on the championships. So that should be exciting. So make sure you tune in. And we'll put out reminders as we get Absolutely. closer to the event uh, of when and, and, and where you should tune in. So don't worry about you know trying to remember that information today. Just want to let you know that, it, that it's kind of upcoming. So aside from the tournament stuff, Right, we're gonna have some professionals we out there. Do. Let's talk a little bit about um, Dr. Q, Florian Kohler, um, and kind of what they'll be doing out there. Let's start with Dr. Q. Yeah, so Dr. Q is gonna be there starting on, I believe he will be there Friday morning. So starting Friday morning, he kind of does a show in between the uh, semifinal and final rounds of the, I guess it would be the eight ball classic. So you'll see the first, actually, Maybe we can try to stream that. I'm not sure if we normally stream that or not. Um, yeah. But he does a show for that, and then he'll do some shows throughout the week 
that everybody throughout the weekend, I guess I should say, that everybody can watch. Um, he'll be at the pool party Friday night. Nice. And and Dr. Q is one of the nicest guys around, so feel free to, if he's walking around, if you want a picture with him or something like that, definitely. Happy to sign yeah, autographs, absolutely. take pictures. And in fact, if you see Dr. Q, you need to make sure you congratulate him because this past December, oh, yeah. he was inducted into the Billiard Hall of Fame. So congratulations to him. And um, I know he's very gracious about that honor. And, and any time you know, folks talk to him about it, he, he loves to talk about it. Big honor for him, as well as his wife, Marty, yes. who will probably be out there, Miss Q. They will both be there. Um, and again, he's real happy to interact. If, if you've never seen Dr. Q, right, he's a trick shot artist. The best way I can describe him is he's like the Harlem Globetrotter yes. of pool, right? The stuff he does on a pool table, just amazing. But he's also an outstanding entertainer, Very. right? It's you walk away feeling good, and, and I mean, you'll you'll your stomach hurts from laughing right. so hard at his show. So he's going to be there, numerous his appearances, and again, you can find that in the event program, the different times. Uh, but he's not the only trick shot artist that'll be he's out there. He's not. We're gonna have Florian Venom Kohler. Uh, he will be out there for a show on Wednesday, I believe, as well. So I'm sure you guys, most of you have seen Florian's um, videos out on YouTube, YouTube. out on Facebook. Um, Who has it? Yeah, right. He's yeah. got a huge presence on social media. So definitely come check him out if you'll be there on Wednesday. Yeah, I know. And, and really cool thing of Florian, he actually was booked to do some work in China oh, yeah. over our event dates. And he called and he was like, you know, I've got this conflict, and I said, is there any way, because the members want to see him, right? Right. It's one thing to see Florian on a YouTube video or on Facebook, and, and that's great, but a lot of folks like to be able to interact with him, mm -hmm. get their photo taken, get an autograph, and he's like, look, I'm going to try to move some things around. I'm going to do what I can, and uh, he was able to make it work, so I think he actually has to, like, fly to China either the night after <laughs> that show, like, but it's, so yeah. he's going to be there on Wednesday uh, doing an appearance, and again, he'll hang out sign autographs, take pictures, and, and I know he really loves interacting he with does. the APA members, so that's something to look forward to as well. Some of the other things as I go through the souvenir program here, uh, and again, we're going to put the souvenir program, if it's not currently up on the stream in the comments, we'll pin it up there, but you can find all this information on different times and things. Practice tables, though, is one of the things that I wanted to mention because this is one of the things that comes up pretty often is, mm -hmm. is when can I practice. So practice rooms or practice tables will be available beginning April 25th, and they'll be available basically every day with the exception of the 29th, right? The only people on the 29th that will be allowed to practice are those that will be competing in the semifinals right. and finals of the um, – nine ball nine shootout ball. and the eight ball doubles because everything else will have started to be torn down yes. right there won't be any other spaces open so otherwise again if you go to page six of the program guide it's going to outline some different times that practice tables are available uh, because again i know that's a big deal to folks mm -hmm. a lot of times too i think the westgate will put tables and I, bill's in, in here casino. i'm not sure if he's listening to us but sometimes <laughs> they'll put them in the casino they'll yes. put them in the in the yeah. bar there so we, we try to get as many tables we are currently there. working with to get some in the bar okay, so we're trying to get even even more tables. Bill's, Bill's off camera telling me uh, if we can get some into the casino, we will. But again, trying to give everybody the opportunity to practice as much as possible. So uh, again, just kind of note page six of your program guide. That's going to tell you where uh, and when you can practice. Of course, we should also mention CompuSport. CompuSport. Uh, CompuSport.us is where you'll find the tournament brackets. I don't yep. believe they're up there yet. Two days before. Two days. Two days. Before. Okay, so days 48, before. yeah, 48 hours prior to the event, uh, you can go to poolplayers.com. We'll have them on our Facebook page, or you can go to compusport.us and find the event uh, that you're looking for there, and we'll have all the brackets up. So the cool thing about that is like you can set up notifications to like get, um, you know, updates on your different right. match times and things like that. Yeah, they so, have a free app too, so nice. you can download the app for free as well. Yeah, that mm -hmm. CompuSport's a pretty amazing thing. It's really changed. A lot of the a lot of the ways that we actually run the tournament itself. It has. So it's it's really nice, and I know the players uh, have found a lot of benefit. So if you're heading out for the first time to this event, make sure that you download that CompuSport app, or at a minimum, uh, go to CompuSport.us or our website uh, to pull up the, the the information to kind of guide out when exactly. you might play, because that helps you kind of plan your trip overall. Right. When you can look down and say, okay, if I win, I'll play here. If I lose, I'll play here. You can start to look ahead and see. You know, I want to play in some mini mania events, or I want to hit the strip, or I want to go to the Hoover Dam. Whatever you want to do, right? You want to kind of understand what time frames you have to work with. And CompuSport really allows you to do that. And like you mentioned, it's free, free? right? There's no charge mm -hmm. for you to do that. It's it's just information that, uh, available to you. So one of the things that I mentioned there, Becky, 
that we should touch on is Mini Mania. Because that is a huge deal. We've got a lot of folks that come out. Some people come out just to play in Mini Mania, and that's one of the cool things about this event as well as our World Championships in August, right, is that you don't necessarily have to qualify to come out and play. Right. As long as you meet the criteria of... 20 league match scores in two either years. In, in two, two years. years. Yeah. Eight ball or nine ball. You can come out um, and play in your yeah. respective format. Current member... Yeah. That's that's about it. That those are the requirements. I yeah. Think. So again, if if you've got the matches played, come out and play Mini Mania. Basically, the way it works is they're 100 percent payback. Um, the the board size will vary. I think anywhere from like eight players, maybe some with 16. Um, and and yeah, the and the like prize money is paid out to like the top 25 percent. Mm -hmm. So there's a schedule in the program book, page Full 15. Schedule. Yeah, we've got them all lined out here. Yeah. So, so you can kind of see what's available if you're interested. And again. Those, here's the one thing I'll say about Mini Mania. Uh, the slots tend to fill up very quickly. So when you get there, right, and again, we, we've kind of already talked about, once you get there, get checked in uh, at the West Gate, yep. get your bags to your room, head down to the tournament area, kind of get acclimated to that, but while you're there, probably a good time to sign up for some Mini Mania events. Yeah, it looks like you can start registering Wednesday at 9 a.m. is when okay. you can start registering. Nice. So. so keep that in mind. Again, if you, if you refer to your uh, program guide, it's going to have all that information, but again, the, the takeaway there is if you want to play in many main events, sign up early. 24 hours in advance, I think, is as far as that we, you let, people as we let people sign up, but you can register 24 hours in advance. Yeah, and, and again, we kind of talked about this. Bill's reminding me, but, and Becky referenced it earlier, bring the positive attitude. There's likely to be a line for many mania, perhaps the longest line that you see between the airport and the hotel check-in and the registration uh, for the event itself. Mini Mania is very popular, but again, it moves relatively quickly. Be patient, stay positive, you will get through the line, you will get registered. Uh, and here's the other thing I'll say about Mini Mania is if you happen to not get registered for events, uh, a lot of times what happens is slots will open up throughout the event and the ladies at the desk in the Mini Mania room will kind of call out what different events open up and you can actually buy them on site when they become available. So. You know, some opportunity, even if you don't get in initially, uh, the potential is there that you may be able to get in later on if you're paying attention. Plenty of pool playing action available. So much pool playing, yeah. right? Like, yeah. you're going to have a hard time not <laughs> finding pool playing at the Westgate when you get there because yeah. it will be everywhere. Uh, we talked a little bit about the pool party. Did. Should be an awesome time. That runs from awesome. 8 to 11. Yeah. Um, I'm looking through the souvenir program to see if there's... Anything like else? Dress code. Dress code. Why don't you run through the dress code? So the dress code, basically, um, we talked about it earlier, the Pool Dog Championship Arena, no jeans, no hats in the championship arena. Um, other than that, I mean, I think it's mainly just you can wear jeans. Ca I'm just going to read it here. Jeans, casual slacks, dress pants, shorts, athletic apparel not allowed. Proper footwear. I think that's pretty. Yeah, and... <laughs> We see some interesting shirts out there, guys, right? Um, keep it classy, or at, at least, you know, minimally classy, right? Um, no F-bombs on shirts, things like that. We're not, we, you know, again, we're not the fashion police, but, you know, there, there's a lot of folks out there, 2,300-something people. Uh, there's children around. So, you know, again, it, it's not something you'd wear around your own family or in your own town. Don't, don't come out to Vegas wearing it, right? Because it's, it's not going to be appropriate there either. Right. And people are going to look at you like you're an idiot. Yeah, and we're taking pictures throughout the event too. That's right. So keep that in mind as well. So that's a good thing to mention, right? Mm -hmm. Throughout the event, not only will we be live streaming the finals of all five of the championships, but we'll be doing lots of different updates through social media. Yes. Lots of updates. Um, daily, we'll post pictures from the event. Um, we try to do kind of some... some live stuff throughout the event as well um so yeah we'll d definitely turn into our facebook page lots of coverage during the event as well yeah so uh, you know if you're watching us now more than likely you already like us on facebook yes. but if for whatever reason you're watching us and you don't currently like the page uh go ahead and hit the like button now um that way you're getting all these updates from the pool player championships as they come out and we tend to put out like at the beginning of the day we kind of put out hey that day's agenda Schedule, what's yeah. going on uh, like Becky mentioned, we'll have uh, photography that we put that we post. We've got photographers out there. Photographers out there, they'll do action shots for you. So if you're wanting, you know, to get some action shots of you shooting out in Vegas, definitely go over to their booth and contact them, and they can get that set up for you. Yeah, so that is a cool thing. Like if you've always wanted to have a nice quality shot of yourself shooting in the mm -hmm. event, 
you know, the the grand room. Um, you can actually schedule with the photographers, yes. right? Yeah. To where they come take professional quality photos. Um, mm -hmm. I think they probably take multiple shots. So you yeah, can kind of choose. Yeah, they take multiple shots. And then, you know, you've got something to go back and, you know, even maybe frame up or, you know, if you just want to put it on Facebook, whatever you want to do. But you can make sure that kind of your experience is captured that way. Yeah, Las Vegas Photo and Video, they'll have a booth there, um, I believe right outside the main tournament room, so nice. definitely check them out if, if you're interested in that. Nice, nice. So and we mentioned social media, um, maybe behind the scenes, maybe we'll behind give you guys scenes, some behind yeah. the scenes stuff if we can. We'll go uh, bother some people behind the scenes. I saw some new gear we got yesterday, which we will did. allow us to kind of move around and do some more live streaming stuff. Yeah. So Steve you can look forward to... Steve and I were testing that this morning. Yeah. Steve, Steve's our production guy who's behind the scenes right now. He He's and I are the show here. testing some gear this morning so we can do some cool stuff. Yeah, so we'll try to that. bring you as much as yeah. we can from the event. If you don't happen to be there, um, if you do happen to be there, again, we've kind of talked about some of the things to help you prepare. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention. So I just talked to the folks over at the Westgate, right? One of the things that was super popular at the championships in August yes. were these steins. Um, and the reason they were popular is one, they make a great souvenir that you get to take home, right? They, can, they hold Absolutely. a lot of fluids, right? Um, but the other thing is, uh, so, so for $20, you can get uh, the stein, which is actually $10, and they'll throw in three beers pretty good deal yeah that's about the best deal you're gonna get on drinks yeah, in Vegas mean, yeah <laughs> so you can find these at the bars in the convention area that's like where the tournament stuff's going on again for twenty dollars you get the Stein as well as three beers um, so that's a pretty good deal that's also where a lot of the the better drink prices they that are. you'll find are gonna be is within that tournament area mm -hmm. um, we talked a little bit before we got started about some of the food options of course we'll oh, also right. have um, Outdoors. There's a barbecue grill outside of the tournament room. What I do think. we call it? We called it Party O. Party O. <laughs> We're so creative. She didn't want to say it. I made her say it. <laughs> Party O. So it, it's like a grill. Like they have music. Yeah, they got a bar out there. And hamburgers and hot dogs and things like that. Yeah. So you're, you're able to grab a bite. It's it's fairly inexpensive, especially for mm -hmm. Vegas prices, and it's quick. Um, the nice thing is the weather, I think, is, is shaping up to be pretty awesome for while we're there. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, when we're in there out there in August sometimes, it's 110 degrees. But right. uh, the, the current forecast looks like mid-80s mid for highs. That is awesome Vegas and uh, Vegas weather. So Much better than here. Yeah, so you can, it's kind of like a barbecue right outside the, the tournament room. Yeah. And, uh, so you can do that. Um, there are other food options at the Westgate. Of course, they have uh, in the sports book area. Um, they don't call it a food court anymore. I can't remember what they call it now. But it's basically three restaurants. Three restaurants. There, there's like a deli, a place that makes sandwiches. Uh, there is a Mexican and pizza, I believe, is the other one. Pizza, yeah. So you've got all three of those. Those are in the sports book. You've got the Italian restaurant Fresco and Italiano. the Edge Steakhouse. So if you're looking for more fine dining, mm -hmm. you have both of those. The Edge is a great steak. It is very good. Yeah, I've been there they a few times. They usually have some, I shouldn't speak too soon, but they usually have some deals during our event, too. That yeah. you can take advantage of. Yeah, a lot of AK times. Specials. A lot of times. So the Edge and the uh, Italian place, Fresco? Fresco, yeah, Fresco, Fresco. Italiano. So um, they are in between kind of the hotel area and the tournament area. So you'll pass them frequently, yeah. and a lot of times they'll put specials out, uh, signage for yeah. specials that you can take I'll advantage of. If there's so. any in here, I don't see any. Yeah, here. So, so those are your fine Benihana. dining options. Benny, Benihana, Benihana, if you've never been to Benihana, is Japanese style. Um, hibachi. Hibachi, where they cook mm -hmm. on the tables and really a fun place, especially if you're with like a group of people or a few people. Um, you know, they, they cook with some flair. Mm -hmm. It's always fun. The food is outstanding. Um, you know, so that's always a really fun time too. I know they also have the sushi place um, that's kind of in the bar area of Benihana. Uh, so lots of dining options. Of course, you've got the monorail right, right outside there. the Westgate. If, so if, if you've never been to the Westgate, or if you've never been to Vegas, there is a monorail that runs up and down the Strip. Uh, one of the nice things about the Westgate is that that monorail stops right, right out front of the Westgate. It is perhaps the best stop on the entire monorail, because as you get down to some of the other casinos, it's like in the back and you got to yeah. walk all the way. But it's right there in the front of the Westgate. Very convenient to hop on that and head down to some of the other areas of the Strip to you know, grab a bite or, or sightsee, mm -hmm. do whatever you want to do. You get a discount too. So head on over to poolplayers.com, the pool player championship section. Right. Um, you'll find info on the monorail discount too. There's there's actually quite a few discounts. I think we have a discount with Enterprise as well, which is at the hotel. So you can find info on all of those on our website as 
too. Speaking of enterprise, yeah, you mentioned there's an enterprise. So enterprise rental, rental car has a, um, a rental and drop-off point at the Westgate. Yeah. So another thing you can do when it comes to transportation from the airport, this is actually what I'm doing, um, renting a car from the airport, returning it at the Westgate. Oh, nice. So, and I mean, I, granted, I booked it like two months ago. It was like, sure. with our discount, it was like 30 bucks. Not bad That's as all. much as a cab. Exactly. And I'll have it for 24 hours. I can go wherever I want. Sure. So, kind of nice. Again, I, you know, I don't know what the, the, the rates will be at this point. We're kind right. of close to the event. But uh, Enterprise and that discount you can find uh, through poolplayers.com. Poolplayers go to the tournament information, uh, and you can see some of the discounts and stuff. We've got discounts for other things outside of the Strip, we right? We do, yeah. There's, um, what is it, the Flight Lines, Las Vegas. Yeah, the I Zip think Line out zip, in the desert. Line. And the, um, uh, the Dune buggy. Buggies, yeah. yeah. Both places that take... That take uh, you know your APA membership for a discount. Mm -hmm. You can refer to that when you're booking your uh, arrangements and things. And again, you find all that stuff uh, through our website, poolplayers.com. So lots of stuff to do. Um, I would say have kind of a plan for what you want to do when you get to Vegas. Kind of have a plan for, you know, how you're going to get from the airport to the hotel. A plan for what you're going to do once you're at the hotel in terms of the tournament. Um, positive attitude. We've mentioned several times, but I think it'll go a long way with having a great experience out there. Um, just a lot to do. And again, we referenced the program, the event program, which you can now find on poolplayers.com. Um, that's got everything you need. Um, I don't know, what else? What else? I'm about to Do kick you out and bring Bill in, so. Oh, I'm getting kicked out, it's all right. Bill, I, that's about it, I think. CompuSport, <clears throat> the event program, Tune into our Facebook page. I think those are the, the yeah. main Yeah, when in doubt, tune into our, our Facebook page yeah. or our website, right? Because that's going to have all the information you could possibly need. It's going to be a great event. It's going to be a big event. It's going to be probably a bigger event than most of you have ever participated in. But it's going to be an awesome event. Uh, you're all champions for the fact that you've qualified to get out there. Keep that in mind. 250,000 uh, people and, you know... You're one of 20, the, yeah. 2,400 that's going to be out there. 2,345, so. I believe, is the number. Lots of numbers here. Crazy. 268 pool tables. That's, that's a lot of pool tables. 48 states, three countries, five championships, $675,000 in prize money. So, lots to look forward to. We're going to switch it up. I'll bring in Bill Tufts here. He's our, again, our director of tournament productions. We'll start looking through. Some of the comments, we'll take some Q&A if any of you folks have any questions you'd like to ask about the event. Um, Becky, everyone. I'll ask you to kind of relay any questions that come up. I did um, not expect to be on camera today. So, Bill, one of the things that came up is the question about checking cues. I'm assuming we'll have a cue check again. Uh, this way? Oh, this way. See, I didn't expect to be on camera. Um, yeah. Hey. Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, do you mean cue guard? You mean Q like guard. a cue guard, guard service? Yes. Yeah, we will have a cue guard service for you to check your cube. If nice. you don't want to walk around carrying that thing everywhere, just go for it. And that's a big deal, yeah. especially for, so I know the Westgate's like sold out on some nights. Some folks yes. are staying at like SLS, Circus Circus, Absolutely. any number of the hotels that we've set up overflow blocks. Um, so some of those folks prefer to check their yeah, queue. Yeah, so if you're down at Circus Circus, you don't want to run your queue all the way back. You want to go get something to eat. They're a great service to just drop your stuff off and then come back and get it later whenever you want it. Nice. So there will be queue storage there, Tiffany. What other questions are we getting, guys? Uh, let's see. Can skill levels move up in doubles? Skill levels can move up in every single one of our events. Now, with the main events, we've got the standard traditional scoring you guys are used to in weekly league play. Uh, we're doing that as well as with observers observing the matches. For some of the other formats, it's mostly on observation. So through Mini Mania, through doubles, well, and I'll say it's mostly through observation. It also has to do with what's on the score sheet. If we're seeing somebody just blowing through the field, we're going to keep an eye on, and people can go up in skill level. So that is important to know. And I know one of the other questions that comes up related to skill level a lot of times is within the 8-ball classic and 9-ball shootout because they're tiered. Yes. So what happens when a player moves up within that particular tier. So are we talking about prior to the event or at the event at the itself, event? during okay. the course of the tournament? So let's say you're at the event and you're skill level four. Right. All right. And let's say that this, this is eight ball. So you're currently in the red tier. Right. All right. If you move up to a skill yellow level tier. five, or I'm sorry, yellow tier, if you move up within that tier during the tournament, if you move up a skill level, you'll stay in that tier. It's very similar to the regional process that our players already went okay. through in that regard. Now there is a little bit of a difference if you move up between the time of regionals and the time that you get to the tournament. If you move up during that time, we do make accommodations to bump you up a tier. So you'll start okay. at the skill level 
in which you're actually calculating. Okay. And that makes sense because you wouldn't be able to kind of redraw the tournament once somebody, you know, you can't move somebody to a different no, a different no, tournament no. In, in the so middle of a, in the sense. middle of a tournament, you can't move them up. Right. I mean, if you think about it this way, tournament plays like a bunch of weeks of play all at once. And if you're successful and you're winning a lot in that, the likelihood that a skill level could change is, is fairly high. I mean, you're getting a lot of what we would call weeks worth of play right. all at once. So we've already accounted for that. We understand that that's going to happen in that particular environment. And so you'll just stay within that skill level tier. Okay, cool. Um, so another question that often comes up, and I know you were kind of planning this out when I dragged you in here kicking and screaming to do this, um, referees, <laughs> referees, right? Talk a little bit about how that works with the referees. All right, so the referees is actually a volunteer program. Uh, they come from different leagues across the country and in Canada. These guys volunteer to come out and work they're our league, events. They're league members, they're right? Members. They're players. Yeah, they're highly, like they're highly skilled league members. They're also very active in their local leagues. They have to take a test. Um, the, first of all, their league operator has certain requirements that they have to meet. Okay. Then these players take a test, they get sent to us, we grade the test, and then based on their performance on the test, as well as whatever local attributes or acumen that they've had on tournaments that they've, they've helped referee, we'll, we will bring them out. Uh, once we bring them out, they do work. We do have them on the floor. You guys will notice they'll be wearing a red smock. They're pretty visible. Now, um, there are only so many of them to go around, so sometimes you might have to wait a little bit for that call, you know, but it's well worth it. If you guys need a referee, wait for one. If you can't find one, go get one. If you ever have a question regarding what a referee has ruled or a call that they've made and you don't necessarily agree with it, the key there is to ask for a floor manager. We always have levels, all right? So our referees are the first level. Again, player volunteers, highly skilled, very good at what they do, but they're, you know, I mean, people miss calls. So if that happens, go to a floor manager. The floor managers are next level. In that particular level, those are, um, league operator volunteers. So these are people that are working in pool day right. in, day out, working in rulings day in, day out, and have a huge amount of tournament experience. So they're very skilled. But again, if you have any issues with the, with the floor manager, don't agree with them, we have another level you can go to, which is the tournament director level. Tournament director level is national office staff who have an extreme amount of experience running these large scale tournaments. Between them and the other tournament directors, we will come to the correct answer. Okay. Once the tournament director rules, it's pretty much so, but always make sure you go through that phase. We hear a lot of the times, I didn't agree with that call. It cost me the match. And then we ask the player, did you, did you move forward levels? Did you ask for a floor manager? And they say no. And unfortunately, once, once play has resumed or once the match is over, we can't go back. It's like, think about any other sport we watch. Once right. the next play once happens, it's decided, it's decided yeah, once the next yeah. play happens, it's over. There's, we can't go back and reverse it. Right. So we'd rather deal with it right then, right there while we can. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, if you guys are at the players' meeting, I also go through that in depth at the players' meetings as well. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff will be covered prior to the beginning of each of the different events. Right. Yes, each event we, we has cover its own all of meeting. this. We cover that. Uh, what to do if you do have an observer on your table? That kind of thing. How to call for a referee? How to ask for a floor manager? Okay, cool. We go through all that, as well as the procedures for just turning in your score sheets, grabbing score sheets, um, all the other ins and outs of things that you may not do locally. That it might be a little bit different at the uh, championship level. One of the things that we talked about, again, we've covered a lot of information today, folks, and if you're just tuning in, you're watching kind of a preview of the APA Pool Player Championships upcoming April 25th through the 29th at the Westgate in Las Vegas. We've covered everything from the, the different fields, the size of the fields, the prize payouts. Um, but one thing that we talked, Becky and I talked about early on, and I want you to just kind of expand on it, sure. is the... Um, uh, identification and player verification and, and what people need to do at the beginning of their matches as well as why they need to do it. All right. So uh, just a quick story. We actually had a few years ago, we had a team that, that participated with a fraudulent player. Uh, we didn't find out about this until after the event was over. And it was unfortunate. We couldn't go back and we couldn't do anything. What we learned through that process was that one of our key tenants, one of our key rules is that you must identify your opponent prior to the start of your match. Frankly, guys, there's just physically too many people for a tournament official to go around and ID everybody before the beginning of a match. So what we do is we ask the other team to ID their opponent. If you ID your opponent, you can tell, does the name match the name on the score sheet? Am I actually playing against the player I'm supposed to be playing against? That is your safeguard. All right, if you don't follow that, you know, until somebody actually figures out who that person is, and if that person even actually plays again, we might not be able to do anything for you at that point. It's key 
that you identify your opponent just to know that you are legitimately playing against the person you're supposed to be playing against and you want to do this for every single match that you play. Before that shooter shoots, make sure that they're ID. Most of the time our referees are going to instruct you to do that at the very beginning. Go ahead and switch, especially for singles, for doubles. It's pretty simple. Mini Mania, same thing. There may not be a referee there, but make sure you identify your opponent. Yeah, and if, if your opponent asks to see your ID, don't take that as a sign of disrespect. That's what that's what needs to be done. That should be it happening is. in every match. Both players should be asking uh, for the, their yeah. opponent's yeah. identification. So again, don't be offended if that comes up. That's, of that's what needs to be happening. Of course not. There was a time where we had name badges and we would make everybody wear a name badge, but a name badge is only so good if... I'm somebody and somebody wants to hand me their name badge, I can right. stick it on there. That doesn't mean I'm that player right. on that badge. The ID to get to Vegas, more than likely most players are flying in, they're traveling in, they're going to need that ID just to even travel. They're going to have it, and we want to know that everybody knows who their opponent is, so definitely check. It is, it is well within uh, your rights to check for that ID, and nobody should take any offense to it. Okay. Um, all right, so we're getting a lot of different questions in. I'm, I'm kind of scrolling back to try to follow along. Someone's asking about Jeanette Lee, the Black Widow. Jeanette actually will be in Vegas. Um, she'll be there in a little bit different capacity. Again, she's going to be doing commentary for all the live stream finals. Again, thanks to our friends at Pool Dog for helping to make that possible. Um, but she's also, for folks that don't know, Jeanette's a league operator now. Yes. Uh, in Tampa, and so she's also going to be there watching uh, her players play in matches, rooting them on. Um, so you may happen to see her in the tournament room, and again, if you do, she's usually very gracious with taking photos and, and signing autographs and things like that. So don't worry, she'll, she'll be around. Uh, question here um, about if you, have, if you only play Masters. Um, I'm assuming that if you only play Masters, you cannot participate in minis because you don't have an established skill level. No, we go with we go with plays, if I remember correctly. We go with the amount of plays. If you have 20 plays within the last two years instead of the 20 scores, we recognize plays. But if you only play in Masters, you have to play as a 7 or a 9. Okay, so we, so if you only play Masters, you can't play in minis. You just have to play in the highest tier. You just events. have to play in the highest tier. That's cool. That makes sense. Uh, and we are going to verify that you've got your plays. We want to make sure that you're not just somebody buying your membership to come out and Makes and win a bunch of minis. We want to make sure that you're an active APA member because sure. the spot you take could take one away from somebody that is playing week in, week out. Makes sense. Um, somebody is asking, will we be scoring our own matches? Yes. Uh, up until the semifinal and final rounds, if you make it to the Pool Dog Championship Arena, you will score your own matches. So make sure you're very familiar with your format and the scoring. Okay. A uh, question that just came in, and again, we kind of touched on this early on, but again, we've, we've talked about a lot of stuff, had to do with getting cues to Las Vegas. Um, so your options to get your cues to Las Vegas would be, uh, one, to pack it. Of course, this assumes you're not driving and you're flying. If you're flying into Las Vegas, um, we recommend you pack that in your check luggage. As far as we know, you will not be permitted to carry on your cue stick or your case. No, they've kind of flip-flopped on that yeah. over the last couple we, of years. So we recommend We just pack recommend it. packing it and plan to pack it. But the other the question that came up was whether or not they could ship their cues to the Westgate, which yes you can. They have is it they FedEx? Have FedEx. Yeah. FedEx. I will say it's probably not the cheapest right. route to go. I mean, if you could pack it well enough in your checked baggage, uh, that's better. I actually play a little guitar. Sometimes I travel with my instrument. Sometimes you can convince the flight attendant to actually hold that for you. It's kind of a, you know, yeah. uh, kind of a thing. Sometimes they'll do that for you for uh, items that can be damaged. Um, but uh, the best case is just plan on packing it and put it in the check baggage. Yeah, and if you do want to try to ship it to the, to the Westgate, what I would recommend is contacting that particular FedEx office at yes. the Westgate. You can go to their website and, and get that information. Uh, just to kind of get an idea, they're, they're familiar with having cues shipped out there. We've now been there several years, so the, they'll be familiar with the process and can maybe give you an idea of what it's going to cost because, like Bill mentioned, it, it's not necessarily the cheapest thing to do. No, but depending on the value of your cue, might be better. Yeah, yeah. it might be better. All right, going through. Becky, any questions that I've missed? I'm kind of scrolling here. Uh, we had one, somebody asking how they can qualify to make it to Vegas. Oh, yeah. So... The first thing, if you want to qualify to make it to one of our events in Vegas, number one is you have to be an APA member. Yes. Right, which you can actually go to our website, poolplayers.com, hit the join button, and, and you can take care of actually joining a league right there online. From there, you've got to get involved in your local league. You've got to start playing on a team, uh, and you've got to start accumulating scores yes. so we can handicap you accurately. Uh, once you have enough scores in the system, you can try to qualify for one of our events in Vegas. Yes, and... 
for this one specifically, yeah. if you wanted to try to qualify for the eight ball classic or nine ball shootout or singles events, you would get on a local qualifier board. In order right. to get on a local qualifier board, you have to have 10 scores. So within the last two years, as Amber reminds me. So if you've got 10 scores within the last two years, you can get on a local qualifier board, typically ran by your league operator or somebody designated within the league. You, play to, you pay to play on the board. If you win the board, you go to a regional. If you win the regional, you come out to the Vegas event. For the doubles, doubles can be ran as divisions within your local market. They can also just be a standalone tournament. For that, you need 20 scores within the last two years. Um, and then based on your local league play, you'll want to talk to your league operator um, and find out how to qualify for those specifics. So the eight ball doubles, nine ball doubles. Yeah, and even if you don't qualify, once you get enough scores, you can. we talked about this already, but you can come out and play a mini mania. So, and that's also 20 scores within the last two years. If yeah. you have 20 scores within the last two years in one of our two formats, eight ball or nine ball, you can come out and play. A combination of the form formats doesn't work. You can't have 10 and eight ball, 10 and nine ball and come. That makes okay. sense. That makes sense. And we're seeing a lot more people do that, right? Yes, we're seeing a lot absolutely. more people come out strictly to play a mini mania because they want to get that experience, right? They didn't necessarily qualify for Vegas. But they want to play in the room with hundreds oh, of fun. tables. I mean, they're yeah. fun. They're fast. Exactly. You know, you, you're putting up your own money. We're doing 100% payback. Right. You know, I mean, you can get into these things and have that big tournament experience without actually having to go through the qualification process for it. Well, and the nice Huge. thing about them, too, is because, like you mentioned, they're fast. There's, then there's, other, there's more time to experience things outside of Vegas. So Absolutely. One of, one of the, so one of the, here's the thing. Like, when you're winning in Vegas... You're playing pool in Vegas. You are not getting out in Vegas. When you when you're losing early or you're playing in shorter <laughs> events, there's more time to explore. And again, there's so much to do in Vegas, from the casinos to the strip to the you know the things outside the city um, to the stuff at the Westgate itself. Um, you know, well, you've the, been going out there what 17, 18 years. And there's like there's that? so many things that we haven't yeah, seen. Yeah, still. there's still a ton we haven't. You seen. You know, so I mean, again, we, and we we talked about this early on. We we're going to continue to talk about it. Positive attitude, win or lose. You know. If you happen to lose early, hey, you had a heck of an experience. You were a champion for just making it out there. You basically got a trip that was, for the most part, subsidized, right? We do yeah. the yeah, we, we do, do the uh, the player assistance, travel, and travel assistance. Yes, we do. The, your room's the taken care of. See, so you've already won, right? And now you've got some time to explore Vegas, play in mini manias, do some of the things that those that are still playing may not necessarily have an opportunity to do. So, so True. it's again, it's going to be all about your perspective and your attitude. So, any other questions coming in that I'm we can address? Yeah. Um, it is by skill level. So for the most part, we've got events subdivided into uh, skill level grouping, say four, fives, eight ball, you know, sevens through nines, nine ball, that kind of thing. We've got a list. Uh, how many events are we running this time? A lot. There's a ton. A lot. A ton. Yeah. Oh, a couple hundred, few hundred at this yeah. event, I think. I think, well, I know we're estimating the total payout at somewhere around 70000 Yeah, so, so there are a, lot of a ton of events. And yes, they are segmented by skill level. So you can find the one that fits you. All you got to do is stand in that registration line, get up there, put down your money, and then get ready to play. And do that sooner rather than later once you arrive in Vegas. If you're going to want to play in minis, once you head down to the tournament room, go ahead and get in the line, especially if it's not super long. Absolutely. Right? Uh, yep. Get in that line and, and try to get registered early on because those will sell out. Uh, even though we run them almost 24 hours, what are we, 20 hours They're a day? They're close to 20 hours a day. I think yeah. the last one goes off at midnight, so it's finishing Crazy. around 3, 4 a.m., and then we kick them right back off at 8 a.m. every day. We run them 24 hours, but they got to, like, clean the room. Right? Yeah, we, 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 literally, we literally have to <laughs> clean the room, like, kick everybody out so that we can get it ready for the next day. So Mini Mania, like, very, much, very up. popular. Make sure you, you know, take advantage of it if Absolutely. you can. And, again, even if you haven't made plans to be out in Vegas yet, if you've got enough scores... And you got a way to get out there? Come out. There's yeah. still time. We're two If you've weeks got a out. question on your scores too, make sure that you check with your league operator. They'll be able to verify whether or not you will be eligible for the events. So save yourself a little bit of time there and a little bit of travel. Make sure that uh, if you need to get a couple more plays in this week and next week before you come to be eligible, you can do that as well. So a couple of different questions, and I know you're going to like both of these. Number one, can you play an APA if you are a semi-pro player? <laughs> Uh, define semi-pro player, I think is the tough part. Yeah, uh, in a sport where where really there is no, say, men's professional tour and the women's pro tour um, is there, uh, the women's pro tour is a little bit easier, but for the men it can get a little bit tricky. If there are any questions regarding eligibility, um, you can email us 
uh, there's an info form on pool players yeah. as well that you can actually email into us and let us know if you've got any questions, whether that's for you or somebody that you know. Semi-pro is something we don't designate. We d basically designate you're either amateur or you're non-amateur. Uh, we don't really go with the semi-pro. If you've done enough within the sport, you're well known within the sport or you're, you're gaining in the sport, and we believe that you've reached the point where we can no longer refer to you as an amateur, then you are not allowed to play. So I would say on the technical sense, if you said semi-pro or you designate yourself as a semi-pro, that is not eligible for APA play. We are, strictly, we are strictly amateurs. Yes, it's not a good sign. Yeah, so we evaluate everything case by case basis, yes. right, when it, when it comes up, because there's a lot of blurred lines there. Um, and I know you've talked a lot about, you know, if you derive your income from playing that's pool, part. right? That's a, that's a big part of that's the consideration. That's a huge part. So. That your income, uh, how well known you are within the pool community. You know, what have you done? What kind of tournaments have you finished in? Who are you playing against? Are you putting up a lot of money? Right. Traveling around the country, traveling the world. Are you aspiring to be a pro player? Um, would you even refer to yourself as an amateur? I think yeah. it's a huge one. Yeah. You know? So the other question that came up that, that I know, and this is interesting because we've been talking a lot about this mm -hmm. the last few days, is the equipment. Yes. I'm assuming when they're talking equipment, they're wondering to know about the, the tables. What kind of tables? How many tables? Why do we use the tables that we use? Okay. So uh, at this event, we will have 258 Valley pool tables. Uh, we use championship cloth. We use Aramith balls, including uh, Aramith Cougar ball that's made for the Valley tables. We've had a long-standing relationship with Valley. We do use those tables for our events. Um, I would say that as far as the table quality, you're not going to find better Valleys on earth. I mean, the, right. the way that they're taken care of, the way that they're prepped, they're excellent tables. Right. Um, really, I mean, it's they're just ready to roll. And, and it's no small feat to set up. 256 tables right. in three days right. you know so the the speed with which the company we work with puts them up just just the whole the whole working relationship it works very well yeah and, and one of the things that, that folks have to remember when it comes to the valley tables is um, that's what the vast majority of our players play on in like, league like 85 percent so and, you know of our and, leagues and are so, played on valleys yeah and so a lot of times the question comes up bill it's like why you know why don't you guys use say diamond tables versus valley tables. Mm -hmm. There was a time we used diamond tables. There was a time. Right? And, uh, my first year at yeah, ADA, we were so actually one of the things that we diamonds. one of the things we heard back then is these aren't like the tables at home. These are too these fast. These play a lot different. These play a lot too fast. fast. Yeah. Pockets too tight. Just a lot different and the experience was not consistent with what a lot of folks had experienced on the local yeah. level. I think it goes with either table that you use. Right. It's we're really going to hear it either way. Right. Um, for us we we've made a decision years ago to go with Valley for many reasons. We've continued to stick with them because they've been a great partner to us and specifically High Country Promotions who provides the, the tables. The guys that actually do it. Who yeah. actually do it have been, have been great to us. Um, the tables play very well. I mean, just for the sheer amount of tables that are out there. And I've run tournaments on both tables. No matter what tournament environment you're in, you're going to hear some complaints when you've got that many tables in that one spot. I would say it's, it's really no different between the two when it comes to that. It just comes down to player preference. And ultimately, you're only going to have one of the two. Right. And so when, when issues happen or, or complaints about the tables are made, right, they're addressed. They've got an entire crew that works yes. the entire time that we've got tournament play going on yeah. that's addressing issues that come up on Immediately. tables. Right. Um, so right after set, we're leveling the tables. Everything's set to go. The tables are actually recovered um, prior to this event. So everything's, everything's pretty fresh. We've got a little bit of play on them so that, so that they're not too fresh uh, for the players out there that know what I'm talking about. Um, but if a problem arises, they're on it. Uh, we've got them on call 24-7, multiple texts. Um, anything goes wrong, it can normally be fixed relatively quickly. Yeah. You know, we, we haven't had any catastrophic instances with the, with the pool table yet. We haven't been able to solve. And the tables are three and a half foot by seven foot tables for those yes, that, that have kind of asked in the chat about it. Um, some now folks have said, why don't you use nine foot tables? Why don't we use nine foot tables? Um, well, we've got two. That, that one's an easy Give one. me all the reasons why we right, use nine all right. foot so tables. First of all, they're too big. Right. Um, and I don't mean too big for play or too big. And like a philosophical, we like smaller tables for right. pool. They are physically too big. We would not be able to fit enough in to right, this yeah. hotel to run the tournament. Right. Um, they just take up too much space. Second to that, they are much more difficult to set up. Right. It takes a lot more trucks to truck them, right. a lot more people to set them up. They cost a lot more money. Do we know anybody that actually has 300 of the same nine foot tables that could even bring those to our event? No, 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 so that's not, another not issue. Not that I know so of. So again, and, and a big part of it ties back into what's consistent with 
what league players are used to. Our Again, players, the majority of our players, there are pockets. Foot. There are pockets in APA where nine foots are dominant. One that I could think of off the top of my head might be Florida. Got a huge nine foot table population, but for the most part, the rest of the country is playing on seven foot tables. Right. The the vast majority. Any other questions that are coming in back here? Any questions that you guys might have for us before we sign off? Again, we've covered a lot of information. We've tried to keep up as best we could with some of the info. As, as we give you guys a chance to ask a few more questions, I'll give you kind of the rundown again real quick in terms of the tiers. So in the 8-Ball Classic, um, again, we mentioned a total of 612 players. That breaks down as follows. By the way, that's, that's actually our largest 8-Ball Classic largest ever. Largest ever, huh? It's the largest ever. So nice. is the 9-Ball uh, Shootout. That's okay. our largest ever. So this is the largest full-player largest largest full championships. championships we've ever had. Nice. So 612 in the 8-Ball Classic, that breaks down to 41 in the blue tier. That's your skill level 2s and 3s. 110 in the yellow tier. Those are skill level 4s. 165 players in the red tier, skill level 5s. Uh, 162 players in the orange tier, skill level 6 and 134 players in the purple tier, those are your skill level sevens. Over in the nine ball shootout, 396 total players, 60 competing in the green tier, 163 in the white tier, and 173 in the black tier, which is your sixes through your nines. In the showdown series events, of which there are three, You've got the wheelchair championship. We're going to have 57 players that's, in that particular that, event. I'm not sure if that's the highest number ever, it's but it's, it's up there. Last year, we were actually only on, I believe, a 48 bracket or, or just above it. So nice. to have 57, we're almost filling out that bracket. It's, it's big. And then you've got eight ball doubles and nine ball doubles. Eight ball doubles has 768 players, which is a 384 board, which maxed is max. Out, maxed and out. you've got 512 players in the nine ball doubles which is 256 teams, again, maxed, maxed out. out. So yeah, Full field. Um, it's going to be a lot of players, folks. It's a grand total of 2,345 participants, 48 states, three countries. That's the United States, Canada, and we're going to have a player there from Japan. Yes, um, $675,000 to be paid out over the course of five days. Again, um, most ever. Most ever. All five championship finals will be live streamed here on APA's Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel uh, or on our website, poolplayers.com, so you can tune in. Uh, Mini Mania is going to be running 20 hours a day. Uh, we've talked about the pool party, which is on Friday the 27th. That's yes. right there at the Westgate um, from 8 to 11. Great Don't want to miss that. Yeah, great great time. time, especially to get outside. I mean, the, the coolest thing, like, I used to love the pool parties at the Riviera. Because you're right? kind of in the middle. They were, they were uh, the epic, towers. right? We had yeah, some yeah, epic yeah. pool parties. Yeah. But the Westgate blows it away because of the background. Yeah, the background. Right? You, you, you sit the, out and look at the, the entire strip. strip. It's yeah. awesome, and it's all open. Plus the area is the areas beautiful, too, yeah. with all the cabanas and the, the lounge chairs. And everything. So it's, it's, a great, it's a great time. Uh, definitely want to come out. The DJ is great. We, we've been using him for quite a while. He always has fun yeah. with the crowd. Yeah, um, limbo. A few we, different fun games. We mentioned yeah. Dr. Q, Florian Kohler, uh, Jeanette, some of the different pros that will be there. There's usually pros there that we don't necessarily know are coming out there. A lot they'll of times come they'll come out around. with some of the vendors yeah. and things. Yeah. So don't be surprised if you run into like a Mike Massey or you know some of the other pro players that, that are fairly well known. We just yeah. we never know. Um, I know last August we ran. I was at the pool party and uh, Skyler Woodward and uh, Billy Thorpe bumped into me. Yeah, they, so they were just in Vegas. Players, yeah, they were just out there yeah. in Vegas for something, and they're like, "Hey, you know." So, uh, you know, bought those guys a drink, hung out for a little bit, and yeah. you know, players love you know being able to interact with some of the, the professional level players. So, there's a lot to look forward to, folks. It's going to be a great time. Again, it all begins just over two weeks, two weeks from tomorrow to be exact, April 25th, at the Westgate in Las Vegas. We mentioned it, and I'm going to mention it again. Make sure you kind of have a game plan. Right? Don't just go to the airport without kind of knowing what the process is. Sure. It's going to make your trip a little more challenging. Kind of understand what you're going to be dealing with uh, getting on the airplane in terms of checking your queue. Kind of know what you're doing when you get to the airport as far as transportation from McCarran Airport, which is the airport in Las Vegas, to the Westgate. It's about a $30 cab ride. We talked about you can take Uber. They have Lyft. Uh, you can do those rideshare apps. Uh, you can take a shuttle with others. It's, you save you a you few bucks. You can take bucks. a limo if you want. You can uh, take yeah. a limo. This is the other thing. I'm glad you yeah. mentioned that. You know, if you show up with five or six people from your league area, if you guys are all in the same flight, and there's a long line at the cab station, usually for like 50, 60 bucks, you, can you get guys can jump in a limo, which is pretty sweet. It's not bad. You know, not yeah, bad way especially to when you're first getting up. into yeah. Vegas, it's like we're in it's Vegas. Fun. Let's do it. Yeah. So maybe splurge on a limo. Um, you can actually rent a car if you rent from Enterprise. You can actually drop it off at the Westgate. 
So some different options. I know your friend Brandon once walked. He did right? walk. Which we do I, not I recommend. Say, yeah, I don't rest. There's like that at all, no but. pedestrian <laughs> access to walk, but, but our friend Brandon, he, if he you're, managed yeah, it Yeah, if you're adventurous, somehow. you could probably find a way. <laughs> yeah, he did. we should have brought him on the stream. He's quite the character. Uh, so other than that, folks, do we have any more questions that have come in, Becky? Everybody's kind of knows what's Hi. up. And again, folks, all of your questions, I think, can be answered through this one magical piece of literature, which can be found on our website, on our Facebook page. That is the event program. Uh, it's going to outline everything from the event agendas to the payouts to the rules, yes. the mini schedules in there. Pretty much everything you need to know is covered there. Uh, we're going to be continuing to put out information on social media leading up to the event, reminders and things like that. So it uh, should be a great time. Again, I think the more well-prepared you are, and the better attitude that you come with, the, be the, you know, the better experience you'll have overall. Absolutely. We're looking forward to having you guys. For it's sure. Be fun. So be sure again to tune in. Our first championship will be bringing to you on Twin. Thursday the 26th, Wheelchair Championship, 5 p.m. Pacific, daylight time. That'll be uh, the Black Widow and I bringing you coverage of that particular final, and uh, we'll have four finals following that. So it should it's be a great be awesome. event. Uh, look for more stuff here on Facebook, our eight, on the APA Facebook channel. Until next time, thanks for tuning in, guys. Adios. Adios.